Welcome to the Lose Weight, Live Life podcast. If you're someone who would do anything to lose weight, yet finds it impossible to stick to a diet, to eat less, or just what you think you should, this podcast is for you. I am your host, certified life and weight mindset coach, Claire McKenzie. Listen in to learn how to stop overeating, lose weight for the last time, and create a relationship with food and yourself that you love, all without diet deprivation and self-sabotage. Hi everyone and a very warm welcome to podcast episode number 85. Today on the podcast I'm addressing 10 things, 10 questions that came up during the Finding Food Freedom coaching experience. For everyone who enrolled, if you've not yet watched or listened to the calls from that week, then I just want to let you know that this is the last weekend there available. So those recordings will be taken down on Monday the 9th of May. And likewise, it's your last chance to enrol in the Lose Weight Live Life Academy before autumn. Spring 2022 enrolment closes at midnight on Monday the 9th of May. So if you would like to join us in the Academy to learn how to create a relationship with food, yourself and your life that you love and to get personal coaching support to help you apply everything that you learn, go to www.thebestyou.coach to enrol now. You see, it's not all about the food and what you eat. In fact, that's just a very small part of it. In the Lose Weight Live Life Academy, it's all about creating a life you love and learning to love yourself so that you don't turn to food to help you to feel better about your life. The Lose Weight Live Life Academy helps you lose weight by helping you become an expert in you, your brain, your body, your mind and your emotions. Because when you understand these parts of you and feel empowered to manage them in a way that works for you, you're going to feel like a whole new person and losing the weight will be much easier. Okay. So here are my questions that got asked during the Finding Food Freedom Weight Mindset Coaching Week. Number one, what is diet mentality? Diet mentality is a phrase I use to describe what you may be thinking, feeling or doing as a result of either previous diet experience in your life or simply from being exposed to normal, and I say that in inverted commas, thoughts and beliefs from family, friends, society, the food manufacturing industry, the diet industry, the advertising industry, all of those things. And so this could be many things from you thinking that you're not allowed. And again, I say that in inverted commas, certain foods when you're working at losing weight. And if you're thinking you can't have dessert, for example, when you're out for a meal with friends, you may feel deprived. Or it may be looking like you believing you don't have enough willpower or you're not disciplined enough when it comes to not eating certain foods. Diet mentality is what causes us to eat all the things over the weekend when we tell ourselves we're starting our diet or a new eating regime on Monday. Diet mentality is what has us making trade-offs with food when we are counting calories in our head or thinking that we can allow ourselves, again in inverted commas, a piece of cake because we went to the gym today. It's also what has us eating to feel better When we get on the scales, don't like the numbers that we see and tell ourselves the diet isn't working. It's also you believing that doing the next diet, that's maybe getting a lot of media coverage, might be the solution for you. Or that you just need to find the right diet in order to get the weight loss results you want. And diet mentality is so common, it's normal. A non-diet mentality, the idea that you get to choose what, how and when you eat, even when you're wanting to lose weight, is really seen to be the exception to the rule. One of the problems with the diet mentality is that it very much focuses on everything outside of you. And when you do that, you have less power to create the relationship with food that you want. When you put yourself at the centre of how you eat and not the diet, that's when you start to feel more empowered and in control of creating the weight loss results. Okay, question number two. How should I deal with food pushers? So just referring to people who offer you food as food pushers is in and of itself quite telling. It's worth reminding ourselves, I think, that every single thing we put in our lives, in our mouths, is our choice. It may not feel that way all of the time, but unless you're being physically or emotionally abused, then it really is your choice. So there are a number of reasons why people offering us food can be a problem or a number of reasons why we think it's a problem. It could be because we typically gratefully accept and appreciate their offer. 
And when we have previously typically gratefully accepted and appreciated their offer, that person might not know that all of a sudden we are eating differently. We've got a different approach to making the food decisions that we make. So of course they're going to continue offering us food because normally we have appreciated that gesture. So people we think of as food pushers, so this may be people who offer us, us food who maybe don't accept our first no thank you and continue to encourage us to eat certain foods, could be offering us that food for a number of different reasons. It could be their way to express love. It could be that they want to feel some element of control. It could be that maybe they have their own relationship with food or drink that's complicated and maybe they want us to have a second or a third glass of wine with them, for example, because then they feel validated by in the fact that they want to have that glass of wine too. They, it feels more acceptable to them. I guess there are many different reasons why people want us to eat, whether they are simply offering or sometimes what they may be doing is prolonging the conversation by repeatedly offering us or wanting to talk to us about why we are not choosing to accept their offer. The more you practice a simple no thank you without explanation, the easier it gets. Sometimes we get frustrated with people bringing us or offering us food because it makes it more difficult for us to manage our own thoughts and feelings around those foods, especially if they're offering us something that we want to eat. We wish they hadn't given us maybe a gift of chocolate, for example, when we really like chocolate, because we think it would be so much easier to not have to then deal with that box of chocolates, not have to feel the desire that we may feel for the chocolate and deal with the thoughts that come up in our head about whether or not we should eat them. But of course, the problem is we can't control other people. Most of the time we struggle to control ourselves, but we definitely can't control other people. People are always going to offer us food. Some will talk about it in a way that's not helpful. We're always going to get food gifts. Maybe we would rather not receive. But what we do get to do is decide how we want to respond. We do get to decide what we want our life strategy be for managing unwanted food gifts or when we are offered something that we would like to say no thank you to. You get to decide how you want to say no thank you when you're offered cake at a birthday party and you don't want to have any. Sometimes we think we'll disappoint or upset the other person and maybe we will. Maybe if we decline the cake, they may feel upset and maybe they won't. Whether or not they are upset is actually not down to you saying no thank you. It's down to what they make that no thank you mean. And we can't control that. So if you're offered a piece of cake at a party, one person who is offering you that cake may not even register whether you have the cake or not. Just literally doesn't even register with them. Another person might have a fleeting thought, oh, oh, that's a pity or something like that before moving on and offering a piece to another person. But of course, you could also have somebody offering you a piece of cake at the party who has the thought, how rude to decline when you say no thank you. And that's okay. It's okay. Allow them to think what they want to about you and take pride in the fact that you're doing what feels right for you. You're choosing to show up how you want to create the relationship with food that you want. Your emotional and physical well-being depends on it. This is important. It's okay that in doing so, in taking care of you, if a few people have a thought about you along the way. Okay, question number three. What should I do when I have lots of social occasions on the calendar? So if you're asking this question, it's probably because you're thinking that having lots of social occasions on the calendar is a problem when you are wanting to lose weight. And again, that sort of almost takes us back to a little bit of diet mentality thinking. So the first thing I want you to do if this is you is to uncover, really uncover what you think is going to be the problem, what you think is going to be difficult because that's going to determine what strategies you want to put in place. Now, you might be thinking, well, isn't it obvious if I've got lots of social occasions that why that's going to be difficult? But actually, no, it's not. There could be many, many different reasons. For example, if you think I haven't got enough willpower to not eat the foods that others will be eating, and so I'm going to gain weight, you're going to need a different strategy than if you're thinking I don't get to choose what I eat because we're guests at my friend's house. So, First of all, get really clear on what the problem is, and it will feel like the truth. What you think the problem is will feel like the truth to you, but it will actually be your interpretation of the problem. You see, not everyone working at losing weight will think that, as I said, lots of social occasions on the calendar or lots of meals out where others are having dessert will be a problem. And this is a good example of why the Lose Weight Live Life Academy is great at helping you create the relationship with food that you want so you can lose weight. Because if we think of maybe 20 different members in the academy, if they're seeing having a busy social calendar as a problem, 
each and every member is going to require a different strategy for resolving that problem because every single one of them or you, if you're listening, is unique and different. And that's the coaching difference that you get with the academy. The coaching you get, the questions you get answered will be unique to your very specific situation. So if this particular problem came up about not wanting to feel deprived or not trusting yourself to maybe not order dessert so that you don't feel deprived, then you would be encouraged to think about how you do want to feel when others are having dessert and you have chosen not to. So first, it's worth reminding yourself it's a choice. You always get to choose before going to the restaurant what you do and don't want to eat. I encourage you to look at the menu. Think about the future you that is the weight she wants to be. When does she decide to order dessert and when does she decide not to? How would you feel if you were easily showing up as her right now? Would you feel capable, in control or proud? Whatever it is that your strategy is going to look like for you showing up as the version of you that you want to be, you can do that right here, right now. You don't need to wait. Okay, question number four. How do you manage feeling demotivated when weight loss results aren't coming quickly as you would like? Again, this question is also very telling of what our normal, as I say that in inverted commas, diet experiences that most of us may have had previously. You see, we associate dieting with feeling tough or difficult, and so we want to create quickly evidence that our efforts, our hard work is paying off so that we don't put ourselves through the misery of dieting without feeling confident it's going to be worthwhile. If you can relate to this question, you're going to want to be curious about how you would feel if the numbers on the scale, because that's what we're normally referring to when we're talking about it working, are coming down. Would you feel relieved, pleased, proud, confident, or maybe capable? And know that if you were feeling this way, it would likely because you are thinking something along the lines of it's working, or I can do this, or I'm finally losing weight, or something like that. And it feels good, and it makes it easier to carry on with the diet that feels hard or difficult. But what if your approach to losing weight didn't feel hard or difficult or depriving? What if it wasn't a problem if the numbers didn't come down quickly because you're figuring out the reason why you came to be overweight in the first place? You're learning to understand your emotional eating patterns, You're learning what foods feel good in your body and leave you with more energy. And you're not learning this because someone is telling you what foods feel good in your body. You're learning this because you're noticing it from within for yourself and 100% deciding for yourself what has you feeling good and energised versus lethargic and uncomfortable. You're discovering that having a different approach to eating, maybe on the last week of the month, when there's always sort of like month end or something at work, when you're working crazy long hours, compared to how you eat the other three weeks of the month, works for you. You're already feeling better. Yes, of course, it's great when you see the numbers on the scale come down, but you don't need the scale to validate that what what you're doing is working now because you already know it. You feel the difference within you. You're noticing that you're not only letting go of the physical weight, but that actually the mental weight is disappearing too. Okay, number five. What should you do when you really want to work on creating a better relationship with food and losing weight, but you haven't got time? Okay, so this question comes up a lot, and I think it's one actually that I really relate to, and there's a few different approaches to helping ourselves out when this feels like the truth. The thing with time is that it's the one thing that everyone has the same of. We all have the same 24 hours in a day, And we get to choose how we spend those 24 hours. Now, many of us don't think that how we spend those 24 hours is a choice. We think we have to spend it in a certain way because of our responsibilities. And even though we think this way, those responsibilities, we are choosing to spend our time on them. Okay. And again, most of us haven't grown up. Okay. It sounds like we're a lot younger than we are when I say that. But most of us haven't grown up listening to parents, friends and family members thinking about how they spend their hours as if every single one is a choice. Most of us have grown up in family situations and environments where people talk about being busy. Sometimes we sort of associate with being busy as to sort of having a a badge of honour where we're always hearing people talk about all the things that they've got to do. Okay, it's not normal for us to talk about how we spend our time as if it's a choice. But the first thing is going to be to challenge your thinking on exactly that, on how you choose to spend your time. 
And again, the good news is that's something we cover in the Lose Weight Live Life Academy. Remember, it's not all about the food. If you've spent 10 years or longer being constantly busy and under pressure to get everything done except take care of yourself, you're going to want some help and support, some coaching help and support to help you figure out how to shift that reality so that you can prioritize and take care of yourself. Or, you know, alternatively, what sometimes happens is that we have a huge life shock, like a serious health diagnosis or someone we know has a serious health diagnosis. And then all of a sudden we are able to address our priorities. But I don't want you to wait for that to happen. Know that one of the biggest obstacles for you to overcome on your weight loss journey will be your time, if you're somebody who thinks this way. But do come and consider enrolling in the academy and asking for help and support with that until it's no longer what's stopping you. Be the person who has the relationship with food that you want. And actually, by the time you're listening to this, we will have just done a focused topic class all about prioritising yourself inside of the Lose Weight Live Life Academy to help members who are working on time not being their biggest obstacle to self-care and weight loss. All right, one final question. Number six, what should you do when it feels like everyone else is making progress and you're not? Okay, again, I could do a whole podcast episode on this question and I may well do in the future. It's one that comes up for most members at some point in their journey. And when you believe everyone else is making progress and you're not, whether you blame yourself for that, as we sometimes do, it's like, oh, I'm just no good at this or I always fail or something else saying things like I knew this wouldn't work for me. When we're in that place, it's easy to stay stuck or even go off on a detour. And it's horrible feeling this way. I hate feeling this way. I can remember feeling this way at in-person slimming club at weigh-ins because when I thought this way, I felt tremendous shame and I could just literally remember wanting the room to like, you know, disappear into the floor. Online, it's easier to hide when you're feeling this way, easier to hide from other people. But that's probably the last thing you want to do because when you're hiding in that way, you're not going to be asking and getting the support that can help you to feel better and move forward. See, the reason we do this, the reason we sort of compare and despair is because our brain likes to catastrophize. And when it tells us everyone else is doing better than we are, it's probably referring to the 10 people sharing their successes and not the hundreds feeling exactly the same way as you. When you feel this way, it's important to acknowledge how you're feeling, to have that compassion for yourself and to hold space for yourself. It's important to know that it's a very normal human way to think and feel. And it's also useful to recognize what your brain is doing. It's trying to protect you on some level. And then you're going to want to focus so that you can help yourself move forward. You want to bring the focus back to you, not on everyone else. You can use what others have shared to inspire you. Ask yourself, what would I like to be true this for me this week to help you shift your focus back to you? What would I like to be true for me this week or even today or even tomorrow? Break it down into smaller chunks and then consider, ask yourself, how can I go about making this happen? You see, when you br- direct your brain to solve a problem, you will quickly emerge from that compare and despair mode and feel much more capable. You're showing yourself what you can do instead of focusing on what you think you can't. You can envisage creating what you want and how that would think and feel to help you and then break the actions you want to take into very small steps and set about completing the first one and congratulate yourself when you do and then take the next step and appreciate yourself and the next step and appreciate yourself even more. And when you do that, you will slowly start to feel better and you will see exactly what you are capable of. Okay, so that was a quick response to some of the questions that came up in Coaching Experience Week. I hope you're having a great week or weekend. And if you would like to get help and my coaching support on your unique questions and life situations as you move forward with losing weight and creating that relationship with food, yourself and your life that you love, then do check out the Lose Weight Live Life Academy before the spring 2022 enrolment closes on the 9th of May. The next enrolment after that will be in September. So to find out all the details, go to www.thebestyou.coach forward slash enroll and take care. And I look forward to being here with you next week. If you enjoyed listening to this podcast and are ready to live a more intentional life, lose weight as a part of that journey and create a relationship with food and yourself that you love, then I would be honoured to have you join the Lose Weight Live Life Academy membership and coach with me. The programme offers different levels of support to suit you, including self-paced learning, twice-weekly calls, private coaching, an amazingly caring community, and lots more. 
Find out all the details about when and how you can join at www.thebestyou.coach forward slash coaching.